you've always had a penchant for taking on unusual characters. What was it about Miss Peregrine and this story that, that you wanted to take it on and bring it to life? Well, it's because it had so many elements that I love, you know. Usually it's like one element, but this one had lots of it, you know. The, the idea of you know, sort of being labeled as peculiar, you know. But basically, the thing I liked about this is that all these kids have their peculiarities, but if you didn't know it, they're like real kids, you know. And that's what I loved about it. That's how I remember feeling. And then also in the character of Jake, uh, I just had those feelings as a teenager, that feeling like you don't fit into society, you know, you're seeing monsters, are they there, are they real, are they not real, you know, am I crazy, you know, so that character I really identified with, and in his relationship with his grandfather, and then the themes of, of, of what's real and what's not real, and then, and then of course, working with Eva, oh, it's always a pleasure, and, and, and you know, she, she is Miss Peregrine. You know? Yes. It was, it was all like really something that, 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 that all the elements together was like, you know, usually, like I said, usually it's one thing. This was like about 10 things. Yeah, and there's so many great characters. There's so many rich characters that you can play in and bring to life. I mean, these are one, this is like a unusual X-Men type of thing kind of going on here. Yeah, but the thing, that, the thing, the thing I loved about those is that with all their peculiarities, they're basically just real kids. And yeah. that's, that, that, that to me was a, a, sort of a theme that I liked. It, it, it represents a reality too. Mm. There's so many different kinds of people. There's so many kids with autism, kids with, you know, there's yeah. so many special yeah, gifts. Absolutely. And I think that everybody, you know, Everybody, you know, it used to be deemed like peculiar as a bad thing, but I always thought it was a good thing, you know, because usually peculiar people or children are, are you know, they're usually quite soft-spoken, quite lonely, quite emotional, quite sensitive, quite artistic, you know, but basically just real people, and, and that's, that those, so when I hear the word peculiar, I, only, I think of it as a positive. Me too. I absolutely do. <laughs> I love that you brought in so many elements. There's practical, there is CG, there's, there's stop motion. What was it, was that always the idea to kind of go in that direction? Well, it was an old mix, and I think a lot of it was because there was a lot of kids that, that you know, hadn't maybe done movies before. Yeah. So it was more important because, because it's more intimate kind of a thing to have as many real elements on the set. That's why we found a real house, you know. We, you know, we did as much real, uh, you, you know, stunts and look, kid, all the kids wanted to do their own stunts, you know, they, that was the most exciting thing to them, you know, can I, can I fly, I get wired, or this and that. So, it, 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 but but it helped, and I think it was just part of the nature of the story, and I had a little stop motion sequence, probably would have done more, but it's very time consuming, so it, it's just, you mix up all the elements, and, and it just project felt like that that was, a, you know, important element of it. Yeah, and it looked, I, I also think it, it made the film a much more richer experience. Yeah, you know, it also, it's like when you're dealing with green screen and stuff, it, like I said, especially with the kids, but it also helps the adult actors, it helps the crew when you can actually shoot a real house, you know, you can shoot real locations and stuff. All that was, you know, it felt like it was, like you say, part of the story. I really love this character a lot. What, how did you get connected to this? Obviously with Dark Shadows, you've worked with Tim. How did he approach you with this? Wow, I mean, you know, um, Tim calls her Scary Poppins. <laughs> scary Poppins. Uh, and she's kind of like, she is, she's kind of bonkers in a nice way. You know, she's like, she has all those rules. She's very strict. She can seem quite tough for the children, but it's all for the good of the children. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a character that, I, you know, has a big heart and would be ready to sacrifice herself for her children. Uh, so it's, 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 oh yeah, it was kind of in a very exciting role and a, and a challenge to play a woman who can transform into a bird as well. So yeah, very, very exciting. Well, I like the fact that she, I, I would have never, I would never see her as scary. This is someone I, yeah. I just, I, I really like the way she existed in this world. Mm. What was it you brought to it? Because it, it's, it's such a great role. You know, the thing is in Tim Burton movies, you're always a bit, I think scared that you would do too much, or yeah. but at the same time you go, okay, you know, I have to be brave. I have to do something a bit edgy and weird. Uh, and yeah, the challenge was like to combine the bird and the woman, you know, kind of like um, to find like the right physicality, the sharp head movements, and the the um, using your hands like claws, no blinking. Uh, but at the same time, you know, to find the humanity in her. That's the thing that kind of drew me actually to the part is. You know, I watch a few times Mary Poppins again, and, but it's just, you know, she loves the children so much. 
and it's that, that was so, such a beautiful thing to play. I've never played kind of a mother figure, so that was that was cool. Well, I also like the fact that it is, you know, the, the whole idea of peculiar is an interesting idea because I think it, we've come at a time when people who are peculiar are kind of cool now. Yeah, it wasn't always that way. What about you? Are you? Are do you, you weird? consider yourself? Do you consider yourself peculiar? People say I'm weird. Really? Yeah, so I, th I must be weird. I don't know. And sometimes you think you, you're a bit sad. You're like, oh, it's not a good thing, is it? Yeah. Uh, because you, yeah, sometimes you want to fit into the mold or it, it's kind of a strange thing. And, you know, as a child, I was super shy. It was, it was not easy and I, I struggled a lot. And I, I, kind of, yeah, I kind of tamed my demons and now I'm giving interviews and I'm an actor. I can't believe that. <laughs> it's quite mad. But... Um, yeah, it is, it's what this movie is about, you know, yeah. it's like, uh, you know, accept who you are, you know, be strange. Uh, that's what makes you beautiful and special. What was uh, your favorite moment during filming? What was it? The, was there a special moment that you had? I kind of like, I, I, um, there were several moments, but I, I loved, uh, you know, when I introduced Jake to my peculiar children, you know, we were, we shot actually in a, in a, in a real location in Belgium, and we were walking through the garden uh, with like, animal topiaries. You know, I felt like I was in Edward Scissorhands. hands. There was like a dinosaur, an elephant. And I was like, oh my God, this is a Tim Burton movie. It was very exciting. How did you get involved in this project? Uh, well, I, uh, it was two years ago now, just just over. I read the script and, uh, and the book, actually around the same time. And uh, I knew that Tim was doing it. And I'm a massive Tim Burton fan. So immediately I was like, all right, um, I'm getting this one. <laughs> I don't care what you say. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna go all out. And uh, I got to meet with Tim and just chat to him, get his ideas, share some of my ideas. Um, and yeah, it didn't take that long actually. A few auditions, uh, a chemistry read with Ella was the last step before we uh, got the part. What was the conversation like? Sing, sing there as a fan of Tim Burton. What was that conversation like when he, you talked about the role? What was that like? Pretty surreal, actually, <laughs> as you can imagine. Um, but, but Tim, even though he, he's this incredible director who's had such an iconic kind of history, he's incredibly down to earth and he's incredibly humble. And he's um, he doesn't really kind of have a show. He does, he's not a show off. He doesn't have a kind of these filters. And so you just see the guy who you're you're going to be working with for the next few months, and he's he's really kind of genuine. And so that's. Mm -hmm just makes it easy to get along with him and chat with him. Now, did you read the books before you got cast, or was it part of the trying to get part of the process? I'd read it just after the script, and then I read the next ones as soon as they came out. Uh, great books, great books. I think they get better and better, actually. What did you bring to the role yourself? I mean, I know it's, it's such a unique role. I mean, I love the idea of these peculiar people having to battle these incredible odds. What was it for you? What did you bring to it? I think Jake is kind of the eyes and is of the audience in this story. He's the, he's the normal one, at least <laughs> compared with the other kids. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess tapping into the idea that this kid has been taken from his home and everything he knows, and he's just been thrown into this totally alien world and environment where everything he thought was kind of a story is actually real. Mm -hmm. And so he feels out of place. He feels totally uh, uncomfortable. And that's something I think everyone can kind of relate to in one way or another. Everyone's been in that position. Maybe not this extreme, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, it, I also like the fact that there was such a mix of uh, CG, but it, there's also practical, there's even stop motion. What's that for you, like for you as an actor to play in? Well, you're right. I, uh, uh, there was, there's great parts of everything. Having mm -hmm. the props there and the sets, which are so rich and detailed, is incredibly helpful for an actor because you're just kind of in there and you're in the moment and there's no kind of distractions and you feel like you're in this fairy tale environment, literally. And uh, as you said, at the same time, we'll have scenes where it's just a green screen and there's, you know, imagine this monster that's chasing you up the stairs. And for me, I actually really enjoy that. It's kind of like playing and uh, letting your imagination go wild. It's like, you know, when you're a kid and you, you're running up the stairs and you, you trick yourself that there's something chasing you and you scare yourself, that's literally what you're doing. And um, you have a lot of fun with that. Cause you, when else do you get to do that? Everyone's so sort of sensible and serious in real life. So oh, it's I nice to <laughs> it's nice to have a break, have yeah. some fun. What is peculiar to you? Well, see that's see that's politics. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Politics is right. Yeah, well, politics is yeah. peculiar to me. Yeah, yeah. What is it about this character? Because 
What I liked about him, he's kind of the charismatic, old-fashioned villain. What was your approach in playing him and, and bringing this guy to life? Reading the source material, you know, and 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 getting the background of uh, the scientific experiment, what he's done, his chasing of immortality and the failed experiments with him and his friends and how they got to this particular place. Uh, and then getting the rendering from Tim of what he looked like was one of those things where, okay, when people see him, he's a frightening presence. Yeah. So it's incumbent upon me to deal with the fact that he used to be human and he's coming back to his humanity and he's very guilty about what he's done to himself and his friends. Uh, and he's working really hard to be human, even though he's still seeking immortality. So when you see him, he's working very hard to be a personable individual. Uh, and Tim was very happy with, with the fact that I didn't want to play the monster, that yeah. I, I used his sense of humor, or I gave him a sense of humor that was big, and Tim was like, more of that, more of that. So I was very happy to explore that side of him before the monster takes over. Well, and I think that's what makes a, a, a villain interesting, is that kind of human element. I mean, what he does, obviously, with the eyes, mm -hmm. is a little d twisted, a little scary, but it's also a lot more fun to watch. Yeah, of course. And you, you, you treat it like it's something that's a normal course of events when you're with your peers. You know, we got a, a big platter full of eyes, and that's what we eat, you know. And you, don't, you don't concern yourself with where they came from, but you watch the relish and joy they have as they eat them. You know, it's kind of like, wow, that looks like a great meal. Even though you know it's a disgusting meal, it's just, it's just so much joy in them eating them. You, you kind of got to go, hmm, okay. Tim has always been a master of taking on something that's unique and bringing it to the big screen. Mm -hmm. What was it like working with him and, and, and experiencing this whole, it's such a great story, I think, and, and, and bringing it all to life and making these children so powerful and wonderful. Yeah, well, being able to, to, to create worlds that are you know, fanciful and very real has always been one of you know, Tim's strong points. And you know, my opinion that you go in and you accept the concept almost immediately. Yeah. That this is the world and this is how it is and these are the people that inhabit this world. Uh, and even though it's it's somewhat a world that we understand because historically we get, you know, uh, being in a place that's you know kind of isolated, we 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 get that it's European, we get that it's in a specific time frame that you know we know about. Even though okay, wait a minute, there's this modern thing happening over here, but these people live in a time warp, mm -hmm. and you accept that, you know, kind of like okay, because they completely inhabit that time warp in a very real way, and he makes you understand how that time warp works, you know, by yeah. watching her set that clock and do all that stuff, and I mean watching the raindrop stop and then they go the bomb go back up, and it's kind of like oh wow, this is so cool. So you buy it. And you buy into it, even with your modern mind and your modern sensibilities, you say, that, that's possible. Yeah. yeah. yeah he's... And the fact that you have these kids, if you grew up like I grew up in a place where we had a county fair every year, uh, the fair would come to town, they had a midway, and they had these big canvases with all these people who had these strange things or peculiar people. You know, people who had like legs coming out of their stomach because they had an unborn twin. You know, or the you know the snake boy who's like uh, it's like a snake body, and you go, know, I can buy that concept. First of all, I got to admit I'm not familiar with these books, and I had never really read them until now. I saw this movie, and now right. I'm dying to read them. Cool, I can thank Tim for that. Yeah. Now, what was the initial nugget that inspired the story? Well, it's a story I had been telling in various ways since I was a pseudo writer as a little kid. Hmm. Growing up in Florida, um, in a sunny town, sort of dreaming of foggy castles in England and reading horror novels and, you know, in bed while listening to grunge music. <laughs> nice. Um, it was a combination of that and all of these stories I'd, you know, been trying to tell about uh, doors to other worlds sort of hidden within our own and um, my obsession with visual things. I had gone to film school, I loved photography, I took my own pictures and I was collecting photos. And I started a vintage found photo collection that I would just get at um, you know, flea markets and swap meets and things and other photo collectors. And they sparked a sort of inspiration in, in my mind that, that it might be another way into 
that same story. And the mysteriousness of the pictures might actually form the spine of a mystery that could lead a character from our world into theirs. It's become kind of cool to be the oddball, mm -hmm. I think. That's and a I, new thing, I think. Yeah, I think it's a new thing. And, uh, and that's something that's a part of culture, pop culture, geek culture, making these people that are so unique. Right. It, was that, did that kind of come into play as I wish that it had been cool to be a nerd when I was a kid. That I know, right? That would have been super helpful. <laughs> so, a little too late, guys. I know, right? <laughs> Seeing it on the big screen and seeing the changes they made, the, how do you, was there anything that you feel that, oh, I wish they would have put that in there, or, or were you happy with what you I said? was amazed at um, all the things that Tim was able to elegantly fit into the container of, of this movie, mm -hmm. and then even go further. The whole third act is sort of an elaboration on the novel, and I, I feel like if, you know, if my mind had just gone slightly to the right, the novel might have gone there too, so it all feels of a piece to me with the novel and the spirit of the book. What character specifically, at least, uh, I think a lot of writers have that one character that they kind of put their, all their, their own personality into. Mm -hmm. Is there one that you put your personality into? There's no one who I explicitly, you know, based on myself, but mm -hmm. in as much as there is a character who's me, it's Jake, who is, you know, he lives in my town in Florida. And um, there's so many little details of his life that I sort of stuck, you know, in, transposed myself onto and the novel's written in the first person it's all I I me me and when you're writing you know 1200 pages three books from I I me me it's really hard not to let yourself leak into that character I've got to read these books man I'm, I'm so intrigued by the story do you see it continuing even further I'm not quite sure yet I just wrote something called the tales of the peculiar which is like a collection of fairy tales that exist within the world oh. so I'm like teasing out more of the world, the history of the world, and the sort of scope of the world, because it's big, and there's a lot there, and it's fun to imagine, you know, the, the breadth of the, the, the fiction, but um, I'm not sure yet. Well, I keep thinking you said grunge music and horror novels. What, what, what oh, was your favorite? <laughs> I, I specifically remember reading it while listening to Alice in Chains' Dirt on repeat, so somehow that worked in my head. Uh, so Tim, for this film, just watching the trailers and everything um, it has a very distinct feel, kind of like a superhero feel. But you said it's kind of an anti-superhero film. But I'm curious, because it kind of feels like Tim Burton's X-Men First Class. If that ever kind of like entered your mind as you were making it, or? No, because I, I always felt, I, I mean, look at it. I mean, I, you know, uh, I've done a couple of superhero kind of things. And, um, and it, it, it's just, that's, you know, that's what the world is now. And I think, I think the thing that intrigued me about this is that it wasn't that, you know, it wasn't that, because you can't really, comp I mean, I don't want to compete with that stuff, right. and I don't want to get jump on the bandwagon with all oh, that. That's not what I'm into, but uh, I, 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 what I liked about it is, is it just more tapped symbolically into that thing about when you're a kid, or when, not even a kid, when you're in a society where you're branded peculiar or you're branded weird or you're categorized into something, it, you know, and these kids, they're not so much as like, oh, these are my superpowers. It's just like, okay, you know, I, I, I have a sore leg or I can't do this, or I can't do that, or I got bees living in me, I like playing baseball. It's just part of who they are, you know, and it's right. kind of like, well, you know, it's just, it's not even something they talk about, you know, it's its like what most kids are like that right. way, and that's what intrigued me, and now often, you know, we have effects, and they do use it to kind of help situations or, or do it, but it's not done in the, like, you know, us against, the, you know, the world's about to end, and, you know, and we're gonna fight off everybody, you know, it's CGI, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's, it, it, it was a more human and a more, kind of symbolic level of these, not so much being powers, but not necessarily afflictions, it's just a part of who these kids are. I mean, building off the superhero thing, um, Batman is back in the limelight again uh, with Batman versus Superman. And I'm just, I'm curious how you feel. I want to see as... Batman versus Godzilla. Next. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm curious how you feel after, I mean, you kind of set the standard with 89 Batman. That's a film I revisit every single year and something yeah. new comes to me from it. So I'm curious how you feel about like the evolution <laughs> of these films. Well, like, I, mean, how, what I don't know. I mean, I, I, I can use only my own experience. I know it was a successful film, but it was certainly not the most uh, critically acclaimed film of the year. <laughs> and, uh, 
and it's just funny. I think a lot of things that everybody was ragging on now they're still there today. You know what I mean? It's just funny. So I I find it just more kind of um, kind of weirdly amusing and and it again makes me feel like I'm on a strange planet. You know, I, you know I always felt like I was different, and I guess well maybe it is because you feel, you you feel like you're on an alien planet sometimes. Tim said that this is kind of like a scary Mary Poppins. Yeah. Is that like your approach to this as well? Did you see it the same way or did you approach the character in a very, in your own manner? Yeah, I mean, Miss Peregrine is, is, is a kind of Mary Poppins uh, on speed. <laughs> you know, she's kind of like, uh, yeah, quite bonkers, and 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 her name is Miss Peregrine because she can turn into a peregrine falcon, and and a peregrine falcon is a bird of prey and is the fastest animal on the planet. So sometimes Miss Peregrine speaks extremely rapidly. And she, <laughs> she can't the pipe. waste time, and she smokes the pipe. <laughs> she uses a crossbow, so she is. She's kind of a very cool, scary Mary Poppins with a nice heart. And speaking of a nice heart, she is also like a very motherly in this yeah. film. Did, were you able to kind of build those bonds beforehand with, with the kids before you started? Or did, was it something that progressed while you were there? Yeah, we, we had a few months. So, um, uh, yeah, we kind of rehearsed a tiny bit before. Uh, but also, uh, you know, it's happening in the 40s. It's quite British. So you needed, you know, there's a bit of distance at the same time. So I, I wanted to be kind of like a, a mother figure, but for them to be a bit uh, uh, impressed by my character. Sure. So I, I, at the beginning, I kept a bit of distance, and then we really, you know, got on. And they, they, the children are very professional and gorgeous creatures. So working with uh, Tim, this is your second time uh, working with him. What is it that brings you back to him in terms of, you know, that it is such a draw to work with Tim on another project? I mean, it's so easy to work with Tim. Everything, you know, is, is, is kind of laid back and he's so so sensitive, you know, and, and um, he has so much heart. Uh, I, I love people who are so passionate about things and, and, and there's something very humble and, and the fact that he listens as well to the actors. He really wants their input uh, and that's quite rare, you know, at his level uh, anyway. Um, and it's such a joy to be on set as well, you know, everybody is happy, they know each other, it's like a, a big family.